In this video, we're going to be learning how to convert this C++ program into Intel assembly. So if you've been watching the previous three videos, we were using a similar program uh, in MIPS assembly and we were using it also in GDB. So this is going to introduce a third way of debugging our program and learning assembly language. So if you haven't already, make sure you have Visual Studio installed and C++ packages installed, and you'll know that because if you don't have it, the C++ stuff installed, you won't be able to create new C++ programs. So I'm sure there's lots of other videos if you're having trouble doing that. Anyhow, I just created a new project, and I quickly typed up this C++ code. Um, so it's just int main and I declare five variables. I've just given them arbitrary values. And then we see if i is equal to j, we're going to let f equal g plus h. Otherwise, f is going to equal to g minus h. And then we'll return zero. So to begin, what we're going to do is we're going to debug our program. So we're going to click step into or step over. Doesn't matter which one because we're just going to go to the next instruction um, step into is, is going to go into a function if there's a function on line. Uh, step over is going to just do the function as one line. Um, so we don't have to worry about that with this program. So I'm going to step into. Immediately I step into and the program, we have the, this is the next instruction that's going to be executed. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to click on debug and windows. So there's going to give us a bunch of different options. So one of the windows is disassembly. So I'm going to click on the disassembly window and we can see that we have our C++ code. If I just scroll down a little bit, you see we have our C++ code and then all the following assembly instructions that correspond with the C++ code. So what we're going to do is we're going to want to view a couple of different windows so that we can see exactly what's going on with our program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click Debug, Windows, and then you see down here we've got, besides this assembly, we've got Memory and Registers. So I'm going to click Registers so we can see all the different registers and all the different values in them. We're going to also add a couple of memory windows too. So let us go take Memory Window 1 and we'll take memory window 2. So these memory windows are exactly the same. We can use them for to view whatever memory we want. Okay. Um, just to give you a little bit of insight into the memory windows, these right here are the instruction memory addresses. This is the address that stores these instructions. So we can see that these windows right here are going to be close to the addresses of the instructions. So if we want to go here, we can click this. We can, uh, we should be able to copy it. Uh, if we can't copy it, I'll just type it right here. Uh, so it's 008F1660. So we will see that line right here. So these are the corresponding instructions with this assembly instruction. So if we actually converted this into machine code, they would be this. And this is going to be useful for us as we continue going through this code. So to begin, we can see that before we even start declaring our variables, the computer is going to do a couple of different things, a bunch of different stuff. So we don't need to know exactly what everything is doing. Uh, right here, we're going to save our base pointer. We're going to save a couple of other addresses, a couple of other registers. Here, we're going to uh, making our stack and our base pointer the same. And the reason I'm not going to go too detailed because I think we went through them in the previous video. And we're going to subtract from the stack pointer. So we're going to create a stack. You know, we're going to have more um, space to have our stack. Uh, here we're going to have a data area where we're going to be able to put our local variables. This is what I think actually. This is not 100% um, not sure, but I know that we're going to be using the base pointer to find the places on the stack where we're storing our local variables. And then right here, um, we're going to have our our segment, we're going to have our extra segment with the data index. So we're going to use this basically to store our variables. So again, I don't want to get too much into this because I'm not 100%, but 
as we go through the program, we're going to be able to figure out where everything is, like we did in the other pro in the other assembly languages. So, just to quickly go through, we're going to step uh, into right each instruction. So we notice the windows. We see the registers, the ones that are red, right around here. We see those are the ones that are changing. So we can qu we can keep keep stepping into, and we can see that the registers are changing. So we see the instruction pointer, it's always pointing to the next instruction, that one's pretty easy. The stack pointer is pointing to where the stack is uh, at the moment. The base pointer is pointing to the base, you can see that the stack is actually a little bit above the base, and that's because, or sorry, yeah, the stack is a smaller number than the base, you see the C and the B, and that's because we subtracted a number from the stack. So we're going to continue, or we're going to step into again. So we're just pushing these to the stack. Um, and actually that wouldn't be a bad idea. So let's just see what's going to happen with this. We push EDI to the stack. So it says the stack pointer is right here. So we should theoretically be able to go to that address. And let's see, this is um, E D I, so that's zero zero eight F one four one. Okay, so it looks like E D I is already there. Wait, what's E S I? Okay, so look, it says E S I. We push E S I to the stack. Then we're gonna push E D I to the stack. So these look uh, the same value. So you can notice that this is the same number as this, except it's in little endian. So we would read the zero zero first. Then 8f1041, 008f1041. So you can see that. So we should see maybe nothing's going to happen because it's the same value as ESI and EDI are the same. So we're just going to continue to step through the instructions. And let's see oh, this, we're going to actually have to step over. So now let's see what's going on. Okay, so our next thing we're going to do is we're going to move the value 0 to this thing, D word pointer F. So this is where our local variable F is stored. This is how Visual Studio writes the assembly, the Intel assembly. So it's kind of confusing. How do we know what this is, right? Well, the easiest way to do it uh, is you see we got this instruction line, right? 008F167E. So we look here in the memory 2 window, 008F167E, 7C, right? So 7C, D, E. So we have C745F8. Now don't worry about the order. Don't worry about like how these lines are looking because I can just expand this window. So just remember, everything in memory is next to each other. So it really does not matter. Um, like how if it's four next to each other, two or one even, I can just put one, maybe that's kind of a good idea. So we can actually see every single thing, right? So 7E, so 7A, 7B, so we see 7E is C7, then we have C745 F8, right? And then we got a whole bunch of zeros, okay? So what is actually saying these C7 and 45 are going to be having to do with the move? Then the F8 is the offset from the base pointer. And then we're going to be moving these four zeros, and that represents zero, which we have in F, right? So if we take F8, we have to be kind of good with our, um, with our hex. We have to realize that that's the number minus 8. So if we look at our base pointer, our base pointer is right here, 002BFCF0. So we're going to subtract 8 from that. And that's going to be 002B F C E 8, I believe. So let's look over there. 002B F C E 8. So E C E 8. So right here, this line, after we execute, it should have all zeros. So let's make sure that that happens. Does that happen? No, it doesn't. So let's, let's just be careful and make sure that we didn't make a mistake. So um, we have 008F167E, 7E, 
So C seven F. So F eight. We have to subtract eight. So if we don't subtract eight from the base pointer, so if I subtract eight, so F zero minus F eight. Um, I think that that should be um, E eight, right? But this doesn't look like E eight. So let's see, what if it's the stack pointer, if I subtract 8 from the stack pointer? 002B FBE8. Oh, I'm sorry, this is FCE8, so it should be FCE8. Okay, so s there we go. So this is FCE8, so it is subtracting from the base pointer. Okay, so now just to make sure that we hit the point home. We're going to go right here, 008F1685. So that's right here. So we got C745, again, move. Now EC, that's minus 20. So we're going to take away 20 from the base pointer. So it's going to be 002BFCD0, right? So we got to find D0. So that's right over here. So if we're understanding now, we'll see that this will be the number 3, right? Because G is 3. And that went over here, so maybe I'm doing bad with my um, arithmetic. But let's see, why did it go to there? So this is F0 minus, oh yeah, minus EC, right? So that's so 20 is 1, 4, right? So I subtract 4 from this. Uh, so I have to carry it, so it's going to be D, so it's going to be 10 0 minus 4, which is going to be uh, C, and then uh, uh, D minus 1 is C, so it'll be C, C, right? So is that right? It's D, C. Uh, sorry, I'm just having trouble with like um, doing the arithmetic in my head, but I mean, you can sort of see that it's right over there. Um, let's try one more just to make sure that I'm not losing it. Okay. So we have 008F, so we have to go to this instruction, 168C. So 168C, so 45EC03. Okay, so 8F168C. Um, so E0, okay, so this is definitely, um, we know that um, <clears throat> F0 would be subtracting 16, so E0 would be subtracting 32. But even so, we just have to realize we're subtracting 2, like just the number 2. So, um, so E0, so we have to take away 2 from BP, right? So. 002B F C F zero. So it should be 002B F C D zero. Okay. 002B F C uh, D zero. So that's this line right here. So um, I'm pretty sure that this is going to become four after I do the next step. And we see that it becomes four. And remember it's in little endian. So if we continue to do the same thing, um, we'll see that these windows will fill up with the variables. So this is our stack. The variable is going onto our stack. Okay, so we finally have gotten past the variables, and now we're going to continue and look at the rest of the code. So here is our if statement, if i is equal to j. So this is very similar to the other assemblies that we've looked at already. We're going to put uh, the value of i and e in the register eax, and then we're going to compare what's in eax with j. So we're seeing if i is equal to j. And if they're not equal, well, we know that i is 9, j is 5, so they're not equal. We're going to jump to main plus 54, so that's the offset for main, or to this address, 08f16b4h, right? So 08f16. 6B4H, right? So that's right here. So now we would go here, which would be in the else statement. Okay. So we're going to, because we know we would jump here, so we'll watch this. Jump, jump, and we're going to skip to 
instruction down here. So then we're going to move what's in G into EAX, subtract um, what's in EAX, which is G, H from that, right? So we're going to take the difference of the G and H stored in EAX, and then we're going to take what's in EAX and put it into F. So we remember where F is, is in our stack. It's right here. So we should see G is, G is uh, 3, H is 4, so we should, should, should see minus 1 over there. And there we go, we got minus 1, which is all Fs. And then we return 0, so we just, we just clean up the rest of our code and give back all the val original values of the registers um, to what they were originally. And that's it.